Another one of our speakers is brought to you thanks to our partner, the French Institute in Slovakia, which we are very thankful for their cooperation and support. Talking about publishers and how to get to them is always an interesting topic to bring up and to return to. And Yves Leon is one of those that are really worth picking their brain. Uh, Yves is the chief content officer at Focus Home Entertainment uh, with past experience and Ubisoft and Codemasters, and he will be revealing some interesting insights and information regarding approaching publishers and what they are actually looking for. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. You let me know when... Yes. You are being introduced by our host. And you can go. Stage is yours. Bon, uh, really well. Really happy to to e meet all of you, and really sad not to be able to, to do that uh, directly live uh, uh, in uh, Kazice in, in Slovakia. Uh, so hopefully for next year. I'm going to do a quick uh, talk on uh, general uh, publishing, what we're looking at as publisher uh, for focus entertainment and uh, um, hopefully with uh, questions and uh, hopefully relevant answers on, on my end afterwards. Um, so first thing, uh, who am I, of course? Uh, so I'm uh, Yves Le Yamanc. I'm a chief content officer at Focus Entertainment. Focus Entertainment is celebrating its 25 years as a, a publisher and myself, I'm celebrating its uh, 25 years in the uh, game industry. So it's a, it's a perfect match between 25 years old. Uh, um, company and myself uh, in the industry. Uh, I started, so that's me. Uh, I don't know if you see the, the camera perfectly, but uh, that's me. Uh, I started 25 years ago in uh, this kind of game. Uh, so they were called uh, at the very early age of internet, multi-user dungeons. So as you can see in terms of uh, graphics and else, it was like very different time. It was like collaborative, uh, ancestors to uh, MMO uh, RPG games and then I switched to creating something very different uh, like a movie and TV series production company which still exists and celebrates 22 years now but in the end I managed to uh, work on both so my company with other colleagues and work on MMO RPG games uh, which was a natural transition from multi-user dungeons so I worked on games like Rhythm, Lord of the Rings Online uh, Star Trek Online, Dungeons and Dragons Online, Champions Online, etc. So a lot of online. Uh, and then uh, I worked, I joined Ubisoft uh, first to work on something really different. Uh, so uh, DS games for um, young audience. So with the Imagine brand, so we did Imagine Movie Star, Imagine uh, Doctor, Imagine Online, etc. So uh, most of all, I joined Ubisoft to work on Imagine Online and MMORPG, but for kids. Uh, and then continued on working on the online aspect at Ubisoft on uh, free-to-play, web-based game, and everything online games like Mighty Quest uh, for Epic Loot, uh, Anno Online, Panzer General Online, etc. And then worked on the PC portfolio for Ubisoft. And of course, Five for Honor, and then all the different brands uh, at Ubisoft uh, by creating a game as a service team uh, with other colleagues that was in charge of the transition Ubisoft to more PC, more player centric, uh, more online um, games. And then recently, so last March this year, uh, I joined Focus Entertainment as Chief Content Officer in charge of the publishing and acquisition uh, strategy and portfolio of the company. Uh, and working on obviously unannounced games and uh, yeah, maybe working on in the future on your game. Uh, so uh, what are we talking about? What will we be talking about? 
uh, and what are we doing first at Focus? So that you give a proper introduction on uh, who Focus is as a publisher and what we're doing. The, we have three main avenues uh, in terms of publishing at Focus, in terms of what we're looking for. Uh, you can recognize here a Plague Tale Innocence uh, game from uh, Azobo Studio in France. One of the first avenues we're doing is uh, we're basing our portfolio not only on genre, but mainly on what we want players to feel. Uh, so we want players to feel uh, emotion. So we have a range of uh, publishing avenue with Azobo games, don't not games, etc., based on players feeling uh, emotion. It can be uh, sadness. It can be a lot of uh, different emotions. Uh, but here, obviously, with Black Tail. So emotion is generally narrative-driven action adventure game with unique characters. Game that make us think, uh, that make us cry, that make us shiver, uh, that makes us excited, etc. Second avenue we have is everything innovation. Uh, so it's games, again, whatever the genre. Uh, so here it's Shady Part of Me by Juicy DM Studio. Uh, whatever the genre, uh, it's games that provide unique twists that can revisit genre, that can break the rules, that can break the codes uh, of gameplay, game design, etc. And the third main avenue we have is everything simulation based. So it's like a, wider understanding of strategy. So generally we tend to take a hardcore uh, concept of uh, hardcore strategy concept and try to expand it to bring it to a larger audience. So of course we did that with Farming Simulator for many years with uh, Madrunner games, Snow Runner games, uh, etc. So these are streaming pillars uh, at Focus Entertainment. And as you might have noticed, so I'm in charge of the publishing and acquisition and my title is not chief business or chief finance or chief publishing or chief whatever. The title for publishing is chief content because that's the first thing we're looking uh, to trying to find with games and studio is great content. So that you bring great content and we bring the publishing arm and uh, our expertise there and everyone collaborates together. Uh, so now you know a bit of, about myself, a bit of a focus. Uh, so publishing then, well, what is publishing? So you think generally a lot of developers think they're stuck at uh, pitching, which generally isn't true because uh, as long as you're passionate, you know your game best than anyone. Uh, generally you don't uh, stuck at pitching, uh, but the good news is that on our end, uh, first as publisher, we stuck at, as you can see, uh, making PowerPoints. Uh, too. Uh, so we is, uh, we suck as well on doing presentation. Uh, so that's not necessarily an issue. The the main questions before getting in touch with a publisher that you the main uh, homework you have to do on your end uh, is questions to ask. Uh, we call it the three W: uh, why, what, uh, and. Uh, Oops, sorry, I have notification. Why, what, and who? Uh, so first thing is the why. Why are you getting in touch with a publisher? Are you getting in touch with publisher to support your studio, to do equity investment in the studio, or is that more game-related, project-related focus? Are you, and as a studio, are you just um, there to, to make a game, and then whatever the studio structure is, the main point for you is to find funding and support to make a game? Game, you want to make a long-term structure. So in the end, you might just want to release the first game that you might do self-publishing or you might do uh, not the game of your dream, but just to get in touch and, and get to get known as a studio. And then you will make your second game that will, and have a longer term strategy as a studio. Uh, so it's first question of the why. Uh, very different trajectory, very different approach on who you would be speaking to uh, and what you would be looking for. Again, game or studio and very different steps, very different uh, people to talk to. It's not the same strategy for studio growth or just for quick find, uh, fun, uh, funding find for uh, your games. And obviously not the same contact, even if now since a few years with a lot of equity investments, lots of uh, margin acquisition, a lot of companies buying other uh, studios, uh, it might change and that might be the same people. Uh, and still on the why aspect, the uh, second thing is, um, yeah, still on the why aspect, the second thing is why are you doing this game? 
uh, how this game is specific, how this game is uh, relevant and important to you. Uh, did you take in an FPG game, if you're making a FPS, if you're making a point and click, a platformer, a roguelite, etc. Uh, why are you doing this specific genre of game? And uh, did you digest the references on the game genre? What are the main um, uh, target audience for the specific genre? Uh, what are the main competitors in your um, game genre area? Did you properly study the market and uh, competition? So that's the main why first game or studio, uh, what are you looking for, uh, support for the studio, support for the game, and why are you making this specific game? Then second thing that you have to ask yourself is uh, what? What is your game? Is your game coherent first? Uh, have it, does it have an internal coherence both on art-wise, gameplay-wise, context-wise, etc., market context-wise? Uh, for example, right now, there's a lot of uh, co-op PvE multiplayer game. Is that as a small studio uh, doing an on online game in a uh, already getting crowded space? Is that studio and how your game will um, differentiate yourself from this crowded uh, market on that specific context and time? Uh, you're making an RTS game, a lot of RTS players switch to mobile right now. So, uh, again, uh, can you switch to mobile? Do you want to switch to mobile to do your? dreamed RTS game. Again, what is your game? What is the, uh, the coherence between uh, the market context, uh, etc.? cetera? Uh, is your game tech-wise coherent as well? Uh, if you want to make uh, live and online games with monetization, online tech aspects, uh, do you have the experience to do a proper live game to support it for many years? Uh, do you have the team for that? Uh, do you have uh, experience in monetization, in infrastructure, hosting, network, matchmaking? Uh, Post-launch support, do you have uh, CI, a content delivery, uh, process so that once you're in post launch and live support, you can start working on a second game maybe and but have still sufficient production and development arms to provide regular content for your players uh, in live and in post launch. Uh, do you have a proper community vision and community handling if you're making a live online game? Um, so after the why, again, the what uh, on how your game coherent uh, internally in terms of art, tech, your, your team strengths, etc., and the market. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the second one. And the second and the third W would be the who. Uh, so who will be the main contact, the, the relevant contact to address the first why question you answered? Uh, then depending on studio, game, etc., will you need a publisher? Will you need a VC, a venture capital? Will you need funding? Uh, will you need just uh, services? So, uh, and you won't need any funding, you might need uh, support on QA, uh, localization, community management, or you might just need a, a distribution partner uh, without all the publishing services just to put your game on uh, certain platforms or to do retail, etc. So again, once you answered all the previous questions, who you should be contacting and uh, address the proper ones. Uh, and by who you should be contacting, again, a bit of homework to be done on, on, on your end. Uh, so instead of just taking um, a database of all existing publishers, all existing VC, all existing uh, funders and partners, etc., just check who is who has done similar game genre uh, than what you're intending to do uh, as a game developer. Uh, if you're making a point and click game, then that might be useful to check who already published point and click, who's still publishing point and click and supporting and have expertise in um, addressing point and click players in 2021, uh, who published similar games and uh, how did this game's release went? Uh, they might have published RTS games, but how did it went in 2021 with, the, again, RTS uh, crowd moving to mobile uh, uh, market? Uh, how did the publishing support went uh, for that specific game? So that you can do a, a bit of due diligence uh, and investigation on, on how that specific publishers uh, supported the game. And one very important thing, uh, as uh, well, 
obviously not now because we're not gathered in, in Kozice and in Slovakia, but uh, it, we, we're a community, even publishers and developers, we're a game industry, we're a community. We're a community. Uh, so don't hesitate and never hesitate. And even it should be uh, really one thing that uh, you can even directly ask to a publisher, who would you recommend me to speak to? Uh, to, so that I get an idea of how when the publisher developer relationship. So of course, every publisher will, will give you the, the best uh, example, the, 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 the developer that will ask, the, that will say the, the best things uh, uh, on, on them. But don't hesitate. And generally developers tend to be uh, pretty transparent as well, even the ones uh, forwarded to you by the, the publisher. And don't hesitate to reach out to the one that weren't um, forwarded to you as contact by publishers. Uh, really don't hesitate to, to reach out to dev to gather feedback on how it went with uh, that specific publisher as a and to, to make the, the network and contact uh, network work. So once you answered all these different questions, uh, how to get funding for either, again, depending on the question, why questions, the uh, or your game. The first thing, because the game you're making is obviously your passion project, your dream game, your dream studio, etc. For the first funding you're going to get, are uh, what you call love money. So it's money from uh, friends, from family, and even beyond that, uh, from uh, players already. So on top of love money, that's also where you can uh, consider uh, addressing two players' love for a specific genre, for a specific topic, for a specific setting, for a specific narration or address tone. Uh, and so making Kickstarter or uh, many different ways to address uh, the players. So love is a strong uh, funding partner at first, even to initiate um, the, the, the support. Then of course you have equity, which is way more easier right now since a few years, because a lot of, uh, uh, players in the industry, uh, VC publishers and other partners. Uh, two days ago, there was even like a marketing agency that announced uh, investing uh, in in, uh, in game studios. So it was raising through many different aspects from BSA Air. So I won't enter into uh, details of the specifics of equity invest. Investments, but uh, from yeah, fundraising uh, through BSA, through uh, you can do an IPO, you can have angel investors, you can have VCs, you can have corporate VC. You can, depending on some countries, uh, and uh, there's a great uh, Slovakian um, presentation that was done by Pavel, and that's been out since one or two days, I think. Uh, depending on certain countries, so. Uh, you can have local support from the government. So in France, we have BPI, for example, there's one existing in Germany, existing in Canada, um, going in South Africa, for example, et cetera, that can invest and provide the first steps of funding for your studio and your company. Uh, and of course, the employees of your company can invest and be partners as well uh, to help setting up the, the companies. And you can have obviously other uh, main known actors uh, to enter into your uh, shares like Tencent, Embracer, and uh, I guess you probably know already the, the, the big names. Uh, third one is the most risky one, but again, uh, the, the name can be frightening, that, uh, but that is engulfing a lot of different uh, reality. It can be, of course, loans, it can be mortgage, but it can also be advances, uh, refundable or not refundable. It can, you can uh, go to your bank, there are specialized banks, depending on each country and economy, of course. Uh, what we call uh, in Europe, there's a lot of PGE that are loans that are state guaranteed. Uh, to prevent you in case you you uh, you cannot refund at some point, uh, then the state will refund the government or the region will refund the, the instead of you the the, the loan in advance. Uh, you can have government. You can have. I'm not sure if it exists in Slovakia, but you can have honor loan, meaning it's loan where you just declare by honor without impacting in case you uh, that you will try your best to to uh, refund the the. The loan uh, in Europe, there is a creative media, media fund uh, that's uh, available for every country and every game developer within Europe uh, boundaries. Uh, so creative media fund for Europe. 
then again, other source of funding, you have everything that goes into ref shares, which is a bit more than purely the publisher developer relationship. Of course, you'd have ref share uh, from publishing partnership, but also from affiliation with uh, uh, some indie firms that exist, uh, from distributors, from platform deals, uh, many ways to get ref shares from uh, what you've worked on. So the more you advance on the timeline, so it starts only uh, at first from love project and, and IDs, then studio, then uh, taking responsibility on the studio and, and, and betting on the future, then at refresh state, you already have uh, something to, to, to share. Uh, you already have some revenues, uh, either from work for hire, either from release project, either from co-development, etc. But it's already uh, some um, numbers uh, and some some financial support to help you grow and and fund uh, other other the future of the studio, and of course you have grants afterwards uh, that you can get through uh, different subsidiaries. You can uh, uh, in again in many countries you have tax relief from both regional, local, national tax uh, relief. Uh, uh, in uh, government, EU government is providing in innovative and creative industries some specific grants, provided there is technology or innovation there, which generally can be the case. Uh, you have regional funds uh, in, again, many countries. So in Germany, you have lender funds. In France, you have regional funds. Uh, in Canada, you have etc. Uh, you can even have private grants, uh, you can have state funding grants uh, by uh, so CNC in France, CMF in Canada, uh, the equivalent, etc. And then that will be the end result, but as a caution to support uh, and leverage the next steps of your game in studio, everything sales related. Uh, so either sales through early access to be the missing part, so you uh, to support the concretization and finalization of your game as a final product between early access and uh, uh, and, and and the full game, uh, you can do again work for, work for hire to join the the eventual missing points in terms of financial. You can get some exclusivity deals again related to what you're selling. Uh, you can get uh, support as well from uh, incubation, from accelerator, uh, the Spielfabrik, for example, in, 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 in uh, Europe and Germany, you have Simia, you have global tap rounds, you have a lot of different partners. And so if you take the, the, the full uh, scheme of, uh, scheme of uh, the, the, the funding uh, round, uh, you start with basically an ID and people loving and supporting new ID with family, friends, players to actual release projects uh, that will support back again to the loop on uh, the next ID, the next game, and get next support. But the more you make games, the easier the first one uh, will uh, work because you would have already uh, a lot of community support, a lot of other player support, a lot of other fellow devs support that can do some organic support and, and uh, reach um, on your end. Uh, so the one thing that you have to manage there is, is of course, the uh, um, proper timing for each of these phases, depending where your studio are, uh, is uh, and where your project is, uh, each of the proper phase. Generally, for example, grants uh, you can have in pre-production and production. Uh, tax relief generally are up to launch. Uh, equity, you can start directly at pre-production unless you're already known as senior. If you released, uh, if you were creative director and producer on fourth night and uh, you set up a new studio, you probably uh, won't have any issue finding uh, equity funding for your studio, depending on a previous game and previous um, track records. Uh, uh, seed funding as well, uh, all other avenues uh, engulf into equity like Series A, B, C, etc. One thing there uh, that basically I almost didn't mention is publishers, because as you can see, there's lots of funding avenues outside publisher that you can get. So again, a bit of homework to be done on your end, but all these different funding sources will help you present something 
two publishers because generally the market is a bit changing right now as you might have seen the announcements of uh, Kepler Interactive, uh, of Thunderful, Robert Teddy, etc. Now there's more and more needs uh, and more and more avenues to get prototype funding but still very fresh, still very new and a lot of publishers aren't doing that yet. Um, so all these different avenues mentioned earlier on uh, could help you fund your prototype so that in the end you will have something to show uh, to publishers because for now again publishers really need to put their hands on something even if it's ugly even if it's dry boxes uh, but you need to be able to demonstrate especially if you're a new studio a new talent you, be, you need to be able to demonstrate that you master the genre and that you bring something new to the genre uh, and that yeah you have all the code etc so that's what publisher generally needs, uh, except previous, previous working relationship together uh, is extremely rare or most impossible to have publishers signing a new founded studio without having never worked to get together and without having uh, a playbook. Uh, but that's why I mentioned the, the funding part earlier on and the other avenues uh, for, than publishers for the funding plan because publishers of course can do also funding but publisher it's really more than funding uh, what a publisher is about is uh, first is the second pair of eyes than you and your team and your studio on content so publishers even during the uh, like seduction phase when you're pitching a publisher uh, and that's normally part of publishers job obviously not to like the hundreds and thousands of game developers we're seeing each year, but to game developers and studios and projects, where well, they're already like, uh, okay, we want to know more on your game, so we're gonna test the game and get back to you. Uh, that's publisher's job when getting back to you to be able to provide you uh, some feedback. Uh, so publishers, they have to do their own work as well and so provide your feedback on your content and that's very important to get like uh, expert professional second pair of eyes on your content and provide your feedback and questions uh, or congratulations even um, so first thing being content and second pair of eyes expertise uh, even uh, network for experts for example uh, you're looking for once to get to that stage of the publisher um, getting your feedback, uh, you're looking for a specialized uh, an expert in narrative, uh, you're looking for a roguelite, for a metroidvania expert, and their publishers can also bring their network, even if you're not signing with them at this stage, um, to help you uh, support, they can help you on, uh, if you're doing a monetization basket test, if you, they can bring you uh, support on economic review, etc. So content is really the first thing where a publisher can help. Second thing is obviously production. So a publisher can help you uh, getting uh, better hosting deals, uh, doing again, second pair of eyes, but on tech and production. How is your inf um, infrastructure? How is your network? How is your matchmaking strategy uh, set up? And they can do review and uh, help you tweak, improve and get better deals as well with the relevant partners. Uh, as well on uh, everything tech related and production related, anti cheat, anti piracy, uh, checking that your milestone roadmap is relevant, uh, either or not to key. Um, and of course, uh, the related payment as publishers for the match roadmap. They can help you on, on uh, localization, on QA, on playtest, uh, engine deals as well, not only with uh, the hosting deals, etc. So content and production uh, and not, on, not just on the uh, funding. Uh, platform, store deals, uh, exclusivity deals with different platforms, bad deals uh, for game passes, uh, for uh, everything related. Uh, you can get uh, Game Pass deals, you can get exclusivity deals with platform, but generally um, publishers uh, can have better deals because from a platform perspective, from Steam, from Epic, from uh, first parties, etc. Uh, if you sign with one studio, yeah, you can get exclusivity for this specific game. If you sign with a, a publisher and uh, you're making like a step 
uh, step forward and, and a better deal with the publisher, you know that the publisher might get back to you as a platform or storeholder for more than one game and for 10 games, 20 games, depending on the publisher's reach and, and portfolio numbers. Uh, also reaching out to uh, uh, other territory that you might have a hard time reaching out as a developer like China or uh, Southeast Asia or Japan, uh, specific territories with uh, different constraints than uh, uh, Europe or the US or Canada, etc. Uh, again, uh, finding exclusivity also on mobile or getting you uh, dev kits or and, and uh, spinning up the dev kits uh, from first parties with uh, PlayStation, uh, with Sony and, and, and Microsoft, etc. Uh, of course, one of the core things uh, a publisher can bring is PR, community, and uh, marketing support. Uh, PR with uh, doing regular press release and global PR strategy uh, with uh, setting up interviews for you as a team uh, with your uh, creative director, your product, producer, your, your team, etc. Uh, trying to get uh, articles and reviews and previews and silent reviews even before the game's release so that again it's a third or fourth pair of eyes but by, by game journalists uh, being done before release on your game to be heading it to the right direction. Uh, silent reviews, previews, uh, and of course, everything marketing related. So organic marketing, uh, performance marketing, branding, trade marketing, uh, everything marketing related, but also the trailers, the teasers, setting up everything that especially can be pretty costly for uh, game developers. And agreeing with you on the, the better release date because as publishers we generally have a better vision on uh, how the competition will be on the if you're planning to launch uh, uh, in February 2026 uh, generally we tend to slightly know what's going to have what who's going to be there around the same period of time what are the best spawns to launch uh, the, the games uh, and what are the best spawns to launch specific game genre. Uh, what are the game events, like games, the, the major game events, bits like Gamescom, PAX East, uh, East Reef, it still exists uh, in, in the later years, uh, etc. So to better time, and again, to get exclusivity or visibility deals like on the Game Awards, for example, uh, in December, uh, in next December. So that's, again, uh, more than funding than publishers can, can uh, get to you. Uh, everything release related, so helping you on uh, TRC, uh, release management, first party submission, uh, and of course getting the re revenue uh, payment uh, to you from gathering all these different sources, all the different stores, uh, which can be quite tricky as game developers to set up, which if you have 20 stores, uh, 30 platforms, uh, 100 countries, that can be quite a challenge to gather uh, follow up and uh, uh, especially deal with all the different VAT between the different countries, uh, currency conversion between different countries, uh, up to date, etc. Uh, managing the refunds uh, from players, uh, managing the refunds, uh, negotiation with uh, with Steam and other platforms, etc. And uh, lastly, everything post-launch related. Uh, so once the game is launched, even if your game isn't live, meaning okay, you release your game, and now you're starting working on next game, next project, etc. Publisher with still keep on working on your game, uh, managing uh, with your agreement, the sales uh, cycle, uh, taking advantage of a Steam uh, event, for example, on PC or uh, specific events on, on uh, like Nintendo sales uh, on Switch or uh, different uh, event bits for uh, the the sales on different platforms. Uh, there's, your game will still be supported by the publisher's uh, community management. Uh, the game will still be present on the publisher's store page, uh, handling events, uh, getting visibility, uh, even inviting you um, for talks, for roundtable, for panels at different events. For example, this year uh, at China Joy, we, uh, we had an opportunity to have uh, someone from our developer um, 
of development studio. So we had uh, the, the studio from uh, other side that was doing a speech at China Draw, which is the largest video game event in the world. Uh, same happening in DevCam, same happening in uh, Nordic Games. So again, that's generally the easiest way for um, uh, event organizer, uh, instead of reaching 200 game developers, you reach 10 or 20 publishers, and then they can help you set up, okay, we will have this creative director, who's, uh, she's really great, and uh, speaker to talk on that and that for the next uh, game day in Slovakia, for example, next year. Uh, so funding is only, I would say, a small part, but of course, a relevant part of everything a publisher can bring on the table. So now that we saw uh, the question you have to ask yourself, um, in which order and what are the different other funding avenues and publishers and what specifically publisher can bring on top of funding, uh, what publishers generally are looking for, again, the same way around the beginning is coherence. Uh, we're not, well, depending on each publishers, but at least for focus, we're not look necessarily looking on or uh, cash cows and of course uh, everyone's looking for that uh, the best selling game ever but best selling game ever is one bit in the time span of a publisher uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that in five years in 10 years in 20 years a studio and publisher will still be there uh, so generally publishers are looking for of course revenues but also uh, coherence through the future, through studio and capacity for making great games and, and having a working relationship. So generally that's, as mentioned, we're looking first for the content, first for the game. Uh, so that's the first trigger, how we're gonna be excited as publisher, we're excited by a game proposal first. Uh, of course, we're going to check if the game proposal is uh, coherent uh, budget-wise. Um, so can this game be made under the uh, assumption of budget uh, proposed by developers? Uh, is it credible? Uh, is it within our range as publishers? Some great publishers uh, have a cap range at 100k and they cannot invest more. Uh, some publishers have a threshold for uh, internal costs because they provide a lot of support in QA, release management, uh, trade marketing, trailers, etc. So that has a cost, you know, internal cost. Uh, and if your game budget is too low, then the internal cost of publisher might be too heavy. So that certain publishers also have a lower threshold uh, to, uh, for a certain uh, game range. So only intervene at 1 million, 2 million, et cetera. Uh, so again, a bit of homework on your end, but you have to check also with the publishers which budget rents uh, are the most relevant uh, for your game. And in reverse, publishers will check if your budget assumptions are coherent um, as well. Uh, and the third thing, uh, core thing we're checking is, okay, there's a great game. Budget seems on track with the game proposal, uh, but can the team deliver uh, this game? Uh, if you're making a hyper-casual, uh, if you only made, you and your team only made hyper-casual mobile, ga mobile game, and your game proposal is really great, but it's an open world AAA RPG on console, cloud, and uh, plat next platform. That's quite a huge step in terms of uh, skills, expertise, etc. switching from hyper-casual mobile to AAA open world uh, RPG online game. Uh, so that's something, of course, every every publisher uh, will check. Uh, same again uh, with the, the between game and budget. Can this game be delivered under the budget and timeline? If your game is an MMO RPG battle royale and your game budget uh, on console and your game budget is 100k euros, then yeah, that will be an issue uh, in terms of credibility uh, for publishers. Uh, if your game is a point and click in 2D and your game budget proposal is 100 million euro, opposite of scope, that would be an issue uh, and concern for publisher. Uh, then these are the first three pillars, and you can see that I still suck at making PowerPoint uh, between the, the, the three 
first thing we want to check. But second layer of things we want to check is uh, going a bit further. Okay, it's a great game proposal, but does it have any sp anything specific value related? Does it bring anything new? Uh, the three main thing we want in terms of value is uh, the three main successful in whatever, in entertainment, in game, etc., etc. is you're the first, you're the best, or you're the most innovative. So we're gonna check you're making an RPG probably not the first then uh, because we already have a lot of RPG in the game industry but are you bringing something new in the RPG recipe and will you be the first to bring that something new uh, or will you be the best uh, to bring that something new on the RPG or will it be the, the most innovative crazy etc uh, RPG space is really crowded uh, so maybe three four years ago uh, the industry would have said yeah a uh, new team from uh, Estonia uh, making, who doesn't have any expertise in making uh, video games, uh, will do an RPG game uh, with a very strong art direction identity, no combat, and very political. Um, some people would have could have said, yeah, not going to work. It's already crowded, RPG, etc. But they brought unique topic, unique quiz to address topic, uh, unique narrative, unique art direction, and that became Disco Elysium. So in terms of uh, comparison between game proposal and what they bring in terms of uniqueness and value, that's something where publisher that's our job. Core proposal game and value, what the game and the team can, can bring in and, and make the extra, extra step. Uh, but it might not be market relevant. So uh, again, is it uh, you, you, you're bringing a, a new idea that's going to be a better way of free to play? Is it nowadays in 2021? Is it coherent? Is that something new for players? Is that something new for the industry? Uh, or is that too much crowded space? And the third one, uh, again, team and audience, uh, team and players, uh, uh, is it relevant for your targeted audience? Uh, if your game project is a competitive point and click on suite for, for China, uh, that might be, what is your co-audience? Uh, either, uh, either even an audience for a competitive point and click uh, on switch only in China. Uh, of course, it's an extreme example that uh, I guess uh, you, you see uh, what I mean, uh, who your audience is and is everything, the game, the value, the market budget, is that relevant? And you as a team can deliver that relevant for uh, the specific audience. And uh, lastly, on top of everything there, the game, the value, the market, budget, audience, and team, a uh, lot of deals happens or didn't happen out of one main criteria, and that works in both ways, uh, the human touch. Perhaps the most important thing, uh, it happens that publisher will fight for a team because it clicked. Uh, and even it didn't click for you, for, for example, let's say, uh, focus, we don't do arcade, uh, mobile, we don't do casual games, etc. But some teams, you think, okay, they tick all the box mentions, it's just all portfolio that don't work for them. So we wouldn't be the right partner because it's not our expertise to do mobile or to do uh, casual gaming, etc. But we feel the team is great. The game has value. It's unique proposition, well positioned on the market, coherent budget. Uh, they know who you, their audience is. The team is really great, etc. So we're not going to keep that as a secret, uh, especially if you're not signing the game. Uh, but especially not in with we travel a lot, so between publishers we pretty know each other uh, pretty well. And so I know, yeah that publisher might be a really good fit for this game. So hence the importance on the human touch when it clicked between a publisher and game developer, even if the game isn't the right fit for the publisher. Uh, publishers might fight for you and do the introduction and do a bit of your work to other uh, publishers. This team is really great. Uh, this team is really great. It's not for us, as you know, but 
really worth checking it out, etc. And so it happened on, on my end where I signed games that were forwarded to me by other publishers. Other publishers signed games that I forwarded to them uh, as well. And again, it's also add a layer of trust because generally, of course, we want to forward you uh, and your game to someone we don't trust as publisher and we, we know each other. We, we know who the, the, the white one, right? ones ha are and uh, who had the, the most experience and, and uh, etc. The opposite is true as well, meaning if you don't behave well or if the publisher don't behave well, opposite of the human touch, uh, maybe it's someone you'll be working with for many years. So yeah, the publisher might have money uh, or might be ticking all the boxes you need. Uh, and the opposite is true. Yeah, the game might be great and uh, it's going to perform well, but I don't see myself working with them for five years, for 10 years, etc. And it, of course, the, the exact opposite works. So on top of everything here, the human touch, uh, the, the how well do you trust, how do you click, uh, do you see yourself working with that publisher for many years is extremely important. Uh, yeah, we still suck at PowerPoint. Uh, and then uh, to conclude, so uh, how to reach there, how to prepare for uh, pitching publishers, VC, to ask yourself a question, etc. For publishers, generally, what we ask is that the first the pitch deck, uh, of course, and then, as mentioned, the playable, uh, because the market is changing a bit, but we generally still need to have put our hands on, on something, even even it's ugly. Uh, events, events are really, really great to, uh, again, when it's not COVID time, uh, to actually meet and start building relationship uh, with uh, publishers. It takes time, but um, it's our job as publishers to meet people and to uh, map to understand, to scout the game industry and the new talents, the new game studios, etc. So uh, even if you're not 100% sure that your game is for uh, Sega, for Curve, for uh, Tiny Build, for Focus, for Ubisoft, etc. Uh, it might be worth taking a chance, but if it's not the case and you get a, a no because, yeah, it's not the right time, etc. Keep uh, entertaining the relationship during the uh, the game events, and maybe uh, when we would be looking for in one year and two years, when we would be looking for, uh, oh, I know this team uh, in Slovakia, they're making really great RPG games, uh, and I'm missing an RPG in my portfolio. Maybe I'll ping them uh, because I've met you during many games events, and uh, uh, again, the human touch. Uh, so prepare a pitch deck. Uh, I will share. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure if it will be uh, readable um, in the next slide, but I will share some examples uh, that are public of pitch decks uh, resources uh, online. Uh, prepare your pitch deck that will explain what is your USP of the game, a unique selling proposal. What is your core gameplay? What is your progression strategy? Uh, how the players will project themselves in the progressing their character, their adventure. Basically, all game loop have a way to progress from platformer to RPG to online games, etc. Uh, everything live is your game is live or post launch. Uh, deck, um, slide on your studio, uh, playtime intentions is your game, uh, five hours, 10 hours, 50 hours, uh, how much replayability it has, and hence related price point. If you're making a three hours uh, game and selling it uh, 60 euros uh, in terms of value perception by players plus market positioning, that might be an issue. Uh, what is your engine? Uh, and if you're moving to, let's say, Unreal 5, do you have expertise already on working uh, in the past months on the, this new engine? Uh, which platform are you considering? Which budget ask? Uh, your uh, production timeline, will you do, be doing a early access, etc.? And some benchmark examples. So you're comparing yourself to, um, you're making a road like, of course, then you're going to have Hades, etc. Uh, so benchmark example and how you're going to differentiate yourself uh, with these games. Uh, events I mentioned, be, be, that's 
not only a way to create relationship and network, but uh, it helps you as a studio and for a game to be visible uh, through online platforms uh, be like Me to Match or Pine or else, but also when it it's feasible a uh, really live event and uh, i think there's someone making uh, in this event making a really great uh, event uh, tool to follow up the incoming events uh, be part of your game industry community there are a lot of discords available that are extremely welcoming uh, for either specific topics like women in games uh, or uh, for business questions like there's Bizshake, uh, GIG even can be a good uh, networking and uh, uh, tool. Uh, indie game business, uh, one. probably you have uh, one locally in, in Slovakia. Uh, and there, since it's more community-based, don't hesitate to reach out or to ask questions in general uh, channels about publishing. And generally, you're going to see publishers or other developers uh, help you and support you there. So be part of, be visible to events, but also be visible in part of the, the community. Uh, uh, that's a lot of work to be done from the earlier slide I mentioned uh, on your end, uh, thought, thinking through a lot of things to be done, a lot of, a lot of uh, market research, a lot of research on publishers, a lot of uh, networking to be done, etc. But just one um, statistic uh, worth mentioning. Uh, we talk a lot among publishers and it's pretty public, that statistic, that data. Uh, every year among basically every publisher, when we receive between 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 games pitch, less than 1% uh, are signed. So of course the competition is fierce. Uh, and in the end, out of the 99 other percent, it doesn't mean these games won't exist. Some will just go on self-publishing. Uh, some will find other ways to uh, be funded or other ways to get support on QA and other partnerships, uh, etc. But uh, in the end, to be part of that, these uh, 1%, all the previous work and questions need to be answered. And the networking, the human touch, the events, uh, and reaching out uh, humbly, as publishers should be humble as well when addressing to, uh, to developers, will help you uh, be part of the, the 1%. And last thing is information yourself constantly informed on what's happening in the game industry subscribe to newsletters so there are lots so, uh, there are a lot of newsletters from jason Schreier's one to rami ismail one to simon Kelly's one to a lot of newsletters uh, that you can receive every day just to get a, uh, the latest news the latest change the latest trends in the game industry uh, so subscribe to the news GIBs, games industry bees, uh, PC gamer, uh, etc. Read articles, inform yourself, and be up to date on what's happening in the game industries. And of course, watch talks and panels, and again attend uh, events. So quite a long road from the first uh, game ID initially on whether studio or game being the priority up to uh, a lot of work to do on your end. Uh, I'm don't know how I'm going to share this so that it's easily clickable and readable from the red, but a lot of uh, available resource on how to pitch. Um, are you ready to pitch? Uh, some example from TinyBeat, how to pitch your game to TinyBeat. Some recent example on, from Raw Fury. Uh, some example here from uh, Backbone Game Developer on how uh, they ended up having their game being signed. Uh, publisher, they Jason the guy to pitching your game. So a lot of available resources uh, for you out there. A lot of great talks as well on how to pitch, what to put into the pitch from both developers advice to publishers advice. A lot of uh, articles, uh, how to pitch, uh, pitch for game to publishers, uh, etc. Tips from publishers and how to pitch them. Uh, great uh, talk on creative leaderships and pitching part from Kit Fox, uh, Tanya Short, uh, absolutely must read. And uh, I uh, advertise this talk a lot because it's absolutely great. It's uh, uh, Callum from Robot Teddy uh, explaining in a very easy and dis understandable way uh, the rev share topic, uh, revenues between publishers and developers 
uh, are shared, uh, what to look for, what to avoid, uh, different mixed mistakes from both publishers, both developers to avoid, uh, etc. And there are some very useful uh, resources also on, on how to do sell and revenue estimate from the publisher perspective so that when you get to your pitch, um, there's a, and, and present your pitch with the budget estimation to uh, publishers, uh, you already have some credibility and have some some some, some work done uh, there yes, uh, there is a lot of things to unpack I'm, I'm really sorry that i'm cutting you here but i think we are on the last slide uh, this is the last slide it is thank you i hope i wasn't too uh, long and uh yeah thank you Perfect. Thank you very much for a really, really informative and super packed session. There are really two questions in the Q&A from the, from the community. I will read you. Uh, I will read them to you. Uh, try to be really, really quick answering them. Uh, the first yeah. one is coming from Yojo. He's asking, uh, is there any specific genre that you are focusing uh, with focus? Uh, is there any specific that this is something that we are focusing on? That's it. Uh, so as focus, generally, it's really mid-core to hardcore uh, in terms of target, target audience. So RPG, strategy games, and anything crazy innovative. But if it's too casual, if it's too Nintendo colorful, it's not our expertise. Okay. Uh, there, I think part of this question was already answered during the, your session, but uh, I will read it to you. Which one do you prefer as a publisher? Promising team with a poor game concept? or a great game concept with a team uh, which you don't find really exceptional? That's, that's a very good question. Uh, so thank you. Um, for focus, uh, the, the easy answer would be, uh, so we are doing a, a bit of investment, equity and acquisition. So for team example number one, then we, instead of doing publishing, we might go to, an, to them uh, for acquisition and help them reach a great game proposal. But if the team is great, then that's clearly something we want to, to help. Uh, for the other one, we're probably going to refuse. Got it. For the I second think, example. Yeah. I think that's the time that we have for this session. Thank you, everyone who is watching. Thank you very much, Eve, for really information-packed uh, session. And hope to see you next time. Thank you. I hope it was useful and relevant for you all. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.